Science is Mikey Chen. When we think of dinosaurs and humans, we never associate them with each other because they supposedly belong to completely different time periods. Dinosaurs were prehistoric reptiles that appeared during the middle to late Triassic period of the Mesozoic era, which is around 230 million years ago. They were members of a subclass of reptiles that included birds and crocodiles and got their name from the ancient Greek word dinos, meaning terrible, and sorrels, which means lizard or reptile. Dinosaurs first sparked people's curiosities in the 1820s when scientists found huge bones of an unknown reptile in the English countryside. Ever since then, dinosaurs have been favorites of children and adults, probably because they're extinct and can no longer eat us. Their sheer size and uniqueness have inspired many documentaries, movies, and stories alike. Humans, on the other hand, according to scientists, are relatively new to Earth compared to the large lizards. While our ancestors have been around for about 6 million years, modern humans evolved about 200,000 years ago. That means that humans and dinosaurs never coexisted, much less interacted with each other, right? And although many people believe that it's impossible for humans and dinosaurs to have coexisted, there has been clues from fossils, paintings, ancient sculptures, and more that tells a slightly different story, implying that humans did in fact interact with these ginormous lizards. I know this is a super controversial topic, but it's also really interesting. So here are some clues for the coexistence of humans and dinosaurs. Hear it out and make your own decision. One of these clues was found in May of 2012, when the brow horn of a triceratops was excavated in Dowson County, Montana that was dated to around 33,500 years ago. Triceratops, a name that means three-horned face, is believed to have first appeared during the Cretaceous period around 68 million years ago and became extinct after around 2 million years. The triceratops brow horn found in Montana was stored at the Glen Dive Dinosaur and Fossil Museum, which sent a sample of the outer portion of the horn to the Paleochronology Group in order to carry out carbon-14 dating. The head of the Paleochronology Group, Hugh Miller, then sent the sample to the University of Georgia for that exact purpose. For those of you who aren't familiar with carbon-14 dating, it's basically the way to find the age of certain artifacts with biological origins up to around 54,000 years old. Carbon-14 was never used to test dinosaur bones in the past because, like I mentioned, it's only reliable up to 55,000 years. But that's only because scientists thought that it was useless to test bones that belonged to creatures that became extinct 65 million years ago. Because of this, methods such as radiometric dating of volcanic layers is typically used to test dinosaur bones, which yielded results that were more based on assumption. It became clear years ago that paleontologists were not just neglecting to test dinosaur bones for C14 content, but were refusing to. After the Triceratops brow horn sample was sent to the University of Georgia for C14 testing, it was divided at the lab into two fractions. One fraction yielded an age of 33,570 plus or minus 120 years, and the other an age of 41,010 plus or minus 220 years. The reason why they split the sample into two fractions was because it reduced the possibility for errors. The C14 test results that came out were not surprising to the paleochronology group because they had carried out the test on dinosaur bones before. All of the results date back to thousands of years instead of millions of years. A model created by the group in 2003 showed that dinosaur bones had C14 that ranged from 22,000 to 39,000 years. Another discovery came in the form of soft tissue found in dinosaur fossils in March of 2005. According to paleontologist Mary Schwitzer, the soft tissue was discovered inside a 68 million year old T-Rex leg bone from Montana. But researchers were able to rehydrate the tissue and prove the existence of blood vessels, blood matrix, and connective tissue. This is really strange because scientists had previously believed that tissue proteins are supposed to degrade in a million years or less, even in the best of conditions, indicating that the bone belonged to a T-Rex that most likely died less than a million years ago. What's more, a small ceratopsian dinosaur that lived approximately 70 million years ago was actually carved by the Hongshan culture, a Neolithic culture in northeastern China. The carving was made out of jade and looks exactly like a Montanoceratops. In addition, Marco Polo also recorded that he saw a 50-foot reptile in 1100 AD with, quote, jaws large enough to swallow a man and a tail so heavy it left a trail in the sand as if a heavy beam had been dragged across. There are many more examples of humans and dinosaurs coexisting, from the Inca stones that were carved around 1500s in Peru that show images of dinosaurs, to the Indian arrowheads found in the late 1800s that were mixed together with iguanodons, duck-billed dinosaurs, ichy and plesiosaurs fossils. So maybe dinosaurs did not die off as early as we had previously thought, or there may have been a few stragglers that made it through the extinction. So now let me defer the question to you guys. Do you believe that humans at one point coexisted with dinosaurs? Do you believe the Flintstones actually happened? Well, not to that extent, right? And if so, how did they not just eat us all? Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you later.
Hey guys, hope you're having a great day. Thank you so much for watching Beyond the Science. It's Mikey Chen. When we think of dinosaurs and humans, we never associate them with each other because they supposedly belong to completely different time periods. Dinosaurs were prehistoric reptiles that appeared during the middle to late Triassic period of the Mesozoic era, which is around 230 million years ago. They were members of a subclass of reptiles that included birds and crocodiles and got their name from the ancient Greek word dinos, meaning terrible, and sorrels, which means lizard or reptile. Dinosaurs first sparked people's curiosities in the 1820s when scientists found huge bones of an unknown reptile in the English countryside. Ever since then, dinosaurs have been favored.